I'm not laughing at him. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to today's vlog. It is Drunken Sailor Sea Story Day, but not before I do this quick hour long zone one, zone two bike ride on the trainer, which I just don't wanna be too boring. It's just not exciting me sitting here spinning circles going nowhere, nothing to look at. I'll probably watch a documentary of some kind just to kind of help pass the time jump off the bike, go into a 12 minute race pace run or targeted race pace run, which for me right now is 10 minute per mile. So I'm hoping that after a swim, a 750 meter swim, 13 mile bike, that I'll be able to jump off, do a 5K run at 10 minute mile pace. That's the, that's my, those are what, those, that's my goal. We'll try to get there. Uh, recap for the drunken sea sailor story is episode four is today. Uh, but I started going in chronological order on episode two. So just to kind of help show kind of the progression of my disease, show how I went from one stage to the next to the next. And it was very, to me very subtle on the day to day I wasn't noticing anything but the hindsight when I finally did get sober was wow <laughs> it was very eye-opening because I didn't even I just didn't realize the life that I was living and the chaos that I was creating in that life uh, so when I started going in chronological order I started with my Navy career basically I drank a little bit like most kids I think in high school um, had my first drink at 11 years old don't remember that it was a story that I had to been I was told by my mom and I think I've sp I spent the majority or all of my drinking career trying to figure out how to feel like I felt that first time even though I'm pretty sure I got sick so it's kind of weird I got in the Navy my first incident in the Navy was getting in a bar fight and because of that I had lost rank had some money docked for my pay I was allowed to finish the flight school program that I was in and then they shipped me off to my first command once I got to my first command within the first two weeks of being there I had another incident where I snuck into a bar on base because you could drink when you were 18 but not on that base you couldn't <laughs> so um, I tried to get around that process I snuck in got fake hand stamp and got caught that made me mad it made my command upset they sent me out to sea promptly like I went replace somebody who was already out um, and this is all within the first month of being in my first duty station, trying to make a good name for myself, you know? So they shipped me out to Sicily, Italy, where I had to meet my, meet my, my detachment who was stationed on board a ship. And uh, so I met the detachment the night I got there. The people, everybody was out on Liberty. They were all partying out in town. We were set to set. We were supposed to get underway the following morning, um, and that we did. But I was introduced to the ship and to my maintenance officer. He showed me the room that I was going to be sleeping in, and uh, again, nobody was there. My roommate was out. Yes, roommate. I was on a uh, civilian ship, and so I had a two-man room. My first deployment. Like this should have been like the goose that laid the golden egg kind of thing for sea duty. And uh, 
So the next morning I get up and we head out. We're underway. You know, I was told, hey, come up to the flight deck at 0700, meet the guys. And that's what I did. About two to three weeks later, we arrived in our first Liberty Port, my first Liberty Port. And that's kind of where my next story is gonna to have to take place and start off after I finish this ride and brick run. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. See you then. All right, the day is moving on smooth and quick, kind of like the bike ride and the run. It was really good, I'll go ahead and put up my, uh, my little Strava, Strava uh, segments or whatever you want to call them. Uh, the bike, I it was kind of as expected, you know, I held the power that I was supposed to hold and um, did the time, I got off, I did a pretty quick transition. I think it was like two and a half minutes that I got off the bike and I was out the door on my 12 minute run, which you saw was eight and a half minutes per mile for, well, almost one and a half miles. That's a little bit faster than the 10 minute mile pace that I'm trying to run on race day. So I really am still so new to this process that I just, I haven't harnessed like, oh, this is what a race, this is what this is gonna feel like. I'm going too fast, I need to slow it down. I was feeling that stuff today, but for whatever reason, I just couldn't slow down. I would slow down, I'd be like, man, this is way too slow, I wanna speed up. And because it was a run and it was a short run, I just kind of wanted to push it. And, and I wasn't even pushing, I was just, this is what feels right. I know that it's gonna be too fast, so I wanna be able to harness that in, but it gives me a lot of confidence that that 10 minute mile is extremely achievable and I might even be able to go a little bit faster. After, you know, after I have a week of taper, kind of get some rest in there, I feel like I'm in a good spot. On to the drunken sailor sea story. Get into port, we, we go from Sicily to Haifa, Israel. We get into port and this is my first ever like liberty, like get off the ship after some work and go have fun in a place that you've never been before. Uh, we get there and the two weeks that I had been on board the ship, you know, I don't know, I, I can't say that I made friends, but I definitely had like found the group of guys that I was most likely gonna be hanging out with for the majority of time. They're the ones that I was getting along with. They were also the guys that were kind of teaching me the ropes. Uh, of how things were working out at sea and on the aircraft as we fly. We get to the bar and just doing bar things, like, you know, just drinks are coming. And I know that I was like trying this new stuff called like Uzo that was supposed to have like, I don't know, opium in it or something like that, you know, like supposedly drinks over there were not regulated like they here are they are here in the US. And, uh, but I was just drinking whatever, that's what, you know, they, hey, here, have a shot. And so I wasn't gonna say no, because I'm of course trying to fit in and be cool. Um, everything was fine and we were the, where my problem comes in is that on the way back to the ship, me and my group of, I don't even know, I think there was about four or five of us. We kind of intersect the senior air crewman of my detachment. And he's with just some other guys that he knows from the ship. They're hanging out and me being the super junior guy, I think I just became a target for him. And so he started kind of he, just putting me down, calling me names. And of course, I my prideful ego stood up and was like, hey, you're not gonna do this to me. And I don't wanna say that my guys were encouraging me, but they definitely gave me the impression over the last two weeks that this guy was just kind of a hard ass and he kind of was just not a cool dude. But, he was the senior guy, so he kind of just had to do what he said. So 
me taking that information and what I knew of the guy, he didn't seem like he really cared for me one way or the other. He was just had to put up with me. Um, and so he was kind of taunting and that was all fine until I didn't think it was fine and I didn't like it because he, would, he just was making me look like a chump. And so my ego and pride puffed up and I came at him to say like, hey, you can't talk to me. And then I don't even know what words were exchanged, but it was a lot of back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing I know, I'm like hit in the side of the head with a beer bottle. Now I'm not trying to say I'm a victim because I wasn't. I mean, I was hit. If we were, if, if this was gonna be a fight, I mean, the guy did what he knew and was like, hey, first, first person that throws a punch is probably gonna be the winner of this thing. And that's what happened because right after that, we were broken apart. I was angry as hell, but you know, the guys that I was with, they know us both. They don't wanna see any more damage than has already been done. They separate us and we go back to the ship sleep it off, so to speak. And the next morning we have to go to work. Well, while I'm in the restroom getting ready, here comes the guy. And he didn't, he wasn't like he was apologizing, but he was kind of letting me know that this is over. It happened. He kind of was laughing about it. Ho, oh, oh. ho. I don't even, and, and it just, it didn't make me feel good about everything, but it made me feel like, okay, at least I'm not like at fault and I'm not in trouble. It just kind of was what it was. And I don't think from that point forward, anything was ever spoken again about that particular circumstance. Nothing was ever spoken again. My life didn't get any easier on the boat, I'm gonna promise you that. But no, it was just kind of like, this is what happens. And I think that for me, that set a stage for, for, for future behaviors, thinking like, it's okay to pick on the junior people. It's okay once you have a certain established piece of seniority that you can act a certain way. It definitely didn't teach me that, oh, when you go out and drink, like you're out of control when you're stumbling and getting in fights and then can't like seem to talk about it the next day. You're trying to like hide, hide whatever happened from other people. That's not the message that I got. It was clearly written on the wall that, hey, Brandon, you've probably got some drinking problems because you've been in three pretty significant encounters while drinking in the last six months. Three in six months, that's one every two months. But yet I refuse to see that there was some sort of a problem happening. And I also, that was just the, the bigger, like that should have been the obvious. The other problem, my cat's tail is coming in here. The other problem is that I was mad enough to engage with this guy. I let my pride and my ego get so just put down and, and, and pushed down that I had to bring out something much worse. And again, this is problematic that the answer to the problem instead of just talking about it, which you're not, you're not gonna do, neither one of us was gonna be in a position to talk, but talking about a problem versus fighting. And that's, again, that the, and, and still now when I think about, man, I was so angry back then that I don't like to like admit the fact that, man, I was like fighting. Why was I fighting? Like why, like, I, you know, it just, there was no need for it. But I didn't know any, I didn't know how to handle those emotions. I didn't know how to get offended and then either just ignore the situation and walk away from it or like maturely say like, hey man, that's inappropriate. You don't need to say that to me. 
And then if that escalated, then be like, well, this isn't getting solved. Maybe we can talk about it later. That's the story, guys. And there are a lot more coming. So keep staying tuned. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, yo-ho-ho. Ho. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Peace.